Hey, what's up everyone? I just wanted to do my quick chapter thoughts on chapter 1025 because oh my god, it was so fire. But before that, I just wanted to explain why I didn't really cover 1024 last week. Personally, I felt as though there wasn't really enough for me to cover for the chapter that didn't just sound sort of derivative of what everyone else was going to say, so I'm just going to do my thoughts on that real quick. The Yamato flashback, pretty cool. Not what I expected, so I assume there's going to be more later on in the future. And Ushimaru, cool. Kind of looks like Zoro. You know, everyone else has been saying these things, so I felt I didn't really have that much to add to the chapter. So I didn't really feel as though making a review of the chapter was necessary. But now let's get into my thoughts for chapter 1025, which was way cooler in my opinion. I'm not even going to lie. Obviously, Yabto's super cool, but this chapter had just... It was so hype. It was really, really hype in my opinion. So I just want to get right into the chapter. But before that, obviously, you enjoy this type of content. Make sure to do the YouTube spiel. Like, comment, subscribe. Because it would be super appreciated. And, you know, what's the harm in it? So yeah, if you enjoy, do all that. And let's get into the review. Before the chapter even starts, though, I just really, really want to talk about the three-page sort of color spread that's been happening with the top 50 characters well 50 of the top 100 characters it was it was so sick like this kind of stuff like seeing all these phenomenal characters really makes me appreciate being a fan of this series because we just get to see all these really really great characters and it's just it, it's so nice to see it's you know it's really cool to see like i don't really have much to say about it but just look at this there's so many cool aspects of it how each of the yonko have characters related to them how a lot of the worst generations together how a lot of the warlords are together how roger is in the background looming over the straw hat crew it's just there's so many cool things about it and i just really really appreciate this this is just it makes me happy to be such a fan of the series so just wanted to talk about this real quick because i just think it's really really cool so the chapter is called Twin Dragons, which is obviously talking about, you know, the things that will happen later on in this chapter. So very, very exciting stuff. We immediately start with Luffy trying to convince Momo to actually fly up to Onigashima. And I'm not going to lie, this chapter doesn't have much, but it's just so exciting all the way through that I just think it's fantastic. We then cut back to the rooftop to see Yamato and Kaido continuing their fight from the last chapter and we get to see some of Yamato's abilities like this cool sort of armor move that they have I think it's really really kind of neat at first I was pretty confused I'm not even gonna lie but apparently it is a reference to a kabuki story and Yamato's entire devil fruit is meant to be the guardian deity of Wano so it fits the aesthetic of the fruit very well with their attacks and I think it's pretty sick that we get to see more of Yamato seemingly being, I wouldn't say equal, but on a very similar level to Kaido power-wise, I think it's pretty cool. Kaido says some really interesting stuff. The way you defy me. It's like you actually believe you're from Wano, but everyone knows you're my son. You can't escape the truth of your blood. It doesn't matter what you do. The samurai will never consider you one of them. I think it really sort of adds a lot to it because obviously in Yamato's flashback last time the samurai did care about Yamato and it was really cool to see that the only people that made Yamato feel as though they belong are the samurai from Wano and not really Kaido who just tried to take Yamato out I thought it was pretty crazy and Kaido says something pretty interesting in my opinion following you spent your entire life running around this island crawling through the attics and desperately trying to escape because you are alone and for some reason that really makes me feel as though kaido is kind of projecting that might sound weird but hear me out kaido obviously is very focused on being this sort of stone wall who has to be stronger than everyone and overpower everyone i feel as though the reason that could have developed is because kaido was in a very similar situation to what they put Yamato through, you know? Always alone, always searching. Kind of like Nico Robin in a strange sort of way. I don't know. I feel as though this is definitely the way, I don't know, foreshadowing 
Kaido's sort of past. I feel as though Rox is the person that made Kaido feel as though they belong, and before that, they were alone. I don't know. That's at least my thoughts on it. Curious what you all think below, because I think that this has definitely some weird hints of foreshadowing to Kaido's past. At the end of the scene, we actually get to see Yamato talking about people who she has considered friends, and it's really, really cool because we get to see Ace, which was really great to see Ace again. We get to see the samurai and other beast pirates who helped continue feeding Yamato, and they were killed by Kaido's forces. And it's just kind of crazy to see how much Yamato has kind of been persecuted against because of this belief in Odin. And Kaido says, more interesting stuff and i'm just i love kaido this chapter he's just the best info dump ever their acts of kindness were just lies the truth is they were all afraid of you which obviously isn't true for ace or the samurai but you know manipulative adult in power kaido's that after all you could easily use your power to impose your will on others which is a confirmation of conquerors which we saw in the flashback as well didn't mention that before but that was super sick to see you're the offspring of an oni. Relying on the friendship of humans is beneath you. That is your lot in life, Yamato. And this was so cool because ever since Kaido was first ever shown, people assumed he had the oni oni no me. There's some ability that makes him an oni or maybe he is an oni. So that was awesome to see. We aren't sure if that means Kaido's an oni. I assume Kaido's an oni because that would be sick as hell. Or maybe Yamato's mother is an oni kind of don't think that again if if Kaido's the Oni that would be way cooler and yeah so that's why Yamato was called the Oni princess in the flashback basically this was super sick and I just love want to highlight this as well this panel of Kaido with the deep shading is super super cool and this was just awesome Kaido solid S tier this chapter next we get definitely my favorite moment of the chapter which is Momonosuke and Luffy's kind of assault on Onigashima. Unintentional, so it be, but still super, super sick. So Momo, still being basically an eight-year-old, is still scared of heights and is really, really afraid, but Momo is flying forward in the air, and Luffy's saying, oh, we gotta land on the roof. We're gonna make it right there, but Momo has his eyes closed, so he's literally just a missile blindly aiming into Onigashima, and it's super sick because Momo crashes through the ground floor and crashes throughout all of Onigashima and it's just really really sick to see. Cannot wait to see this animated because this has so much potential for added more fun content. So after Momo is starting to smash up the lower sections of the castle they actually get to the top and Momo's in disbelief like how are we still going? <laughs> we have to land eventually right? And Luffy says that they made it to the roof and that Kaido is over there and Momo completely changes his demeanor saying Kaido and he's just so focused and I'm like that was cool that was really cool now Luffy changes to gear forth and Yamato charges forward and they both attack Kaido in this super sick panel and we get to see some reconciliation saying you were keeping Kaido busy for us thanks a bunch we owe you big time which you know obviously Yamato super stoked about that that Luffy and Momo have returned and the final page is super super sick we get to see both momo's dragon who is scared out of his mind and kaido's dragon just together and it looks super clean kaido says straw hat how are you still breathing and who is this dragon luffy says his thing saying it doesn't matter what you do i'm not gonna die i'm the man who'll be king of the pirates and momo says also as sort of affirmatively but a bit nervous at the start but my name is kozuki momonosuke i am the man who will be the shogun of wano which obviously luffy has inspired momo a lot to be more confident which is great to see and kaido says Wololo, you're the brat how unexpected this world doesn't need another dragon such a cool way to end the chapter three super strong willed well momonosuke is not that strong willed yet but He's getting there but two super strong-willed people just fighting it out and i love the panel of luffy on top of momo's head it looks so so sick so yeah those are my thoughts on the chapter absolute banger in my opinion and super stoked to see what happens next we do have a break next week so i'll be thinking about some predictions of what could happen next but 
I'm going to be honest right now. I got no clue. So if I come up with anything, I'll do a video on that. If not, I'll just be theorizing on stream and stuff. Probably. So yeah. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to do the YouTube spiel. Like, comment, subscribe. Because it would be super appreciated. Any supports necessary would be fire. So yeah. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. And have a good one.